All right. Welcome, everyone. Today we have John Sonmez. Um, man, it's, it's so great to have you. So one thing that's really interesting about John that resonates with me is that, you know, he started off in a very technical, very analysis, very this, this hardcore life where he was a programmer, you know, he was just all the time in, in a cubicle or in an office. And now I see John, you know, he's running marathons. He's, he's lifting, he's teaching people how to be bulldogs, have, how to have that bulldog mindset. And he's creating communities. He's creating these uh, platforms for men to come and express themselves and become physically fit and so on. And yeah, dude, so thanks a lot for being here with us. Um, I, I have literally the, the, you're the perfect person for me to ask the question that I'm going to ask you. Okay. So All right. well, welcome to our channel, man. Yeah, thanks. Um, Glad to be here. Yeah, man. Um, so I want to talk to you about social anxiety. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's the number one mental disorder in the world today. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot, there are a lot of aspects to it, but the one specific thing I want to ask you is how do you feel in the world today? You know, you coming from a very programming, very technical background and being around your colleagues who may have this disorder and now you kind of get out of it. You know, now you sort of have a different purpose, a different world. You have, you know, you're, you're communicating with top people in a different environment. So what do you, what do you see, man? Like someone out there who's a programmer today, who's uh, very technically minded, sitting in a cubicle, and they, they kind of feel they need to get free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do they do, man? So, okay, so I'll start with this. I'll, I'll say that, that, and this will be somewhat controversial, but there's no such thing as social anxiety. And I mean this in the sense that we all have it. It's built in. Like what the problem, and I, and I coach a lot of guys, and this, this is probably one of the biggest topics that I, that I end up coaching a lot of my coaching clients on, is that they believe that there's something wrong with them because they have social anxiety. And what I try to tell them is that no man, it's that's the normal state of humanity of being a human is that you feel this way that you're nervous to go and talk to people you're nervous, especially as a man to go and talk to a beautiful woman that you see that's just built in it's into our built into our nature. Maybe there's a few people that it seems like they that don't have or never had social anxiety. But those people just had a lot of positive reinforcements from their early experiences that have made it so that it's, it's not at that surface level, but there is someone or some situation where they would exhibit those same things. So I think really the, the key thing, and, the, and this was also key for my understanding, was that it, you're normal, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with you, you're good. Like this is, you have to overcome this because, and the reason why I frame it that way is simply because if you see it as something wrong with you, you're looking for a cure and there is no cure. Right. If you see it as, you know, for example, let's let's say this here. Here's kind of a, an, another way to look at this. Right. So let's say that I was like, man, I have um, I've got uh, I've got muscular size uh, problems. <laughs> like I have a disease. My my I, I just I see other guys at the gym and they're big and they're and they're buff, but I don't have muscles. I, I, there's something wrong with me. I've got some kind of a disorder. <laughs> <laughs> you would be like, dude, it's because you didn't go to the gym and fucking lift. That's why all these guys that have big muscles, they weren't born with big muscles. Sure. Some people might have a, a better genetic propensity to put on mass and size, just like some people might have a little bit of a better genetic propensity to be a little bit more outgoing and to, to be a little bit less socially conscious of, of what's going on and, and be afraid. But you would tell them, go to the gym and lift weights and there's nothing wrong with you, brother. <laughs> just you just need to go and do that if you want to become uh, strong. And so it's the same thing, you know, with social anxiety. And that was something that I had to realize was that hey, there's nothing wrong with me. I just haven't developed this skill yet, right? It, it's and and what happens unfortunately is that any phobia, right? You know, I used to be an extremely scared person just had a lot of just, I was afraid to go on airplanes. I was afraid to go on roller coasters, afraid to go talk to girls, afraid of, you know, a lot of things. And what I realized was that with any kind of phobia, what happens is that if 
like, you know, you face the demon, right? And you got a choice. You, you either go and you face the demon, like when the demon's there, or you run away. And every time you run away, you reinforce that neural pathway that says, fuck, this is bad. <laughs> and, and, and so what happens is that you start off with a mild kind of, you know, quote, social anxiety or just, just normal, just like just what normal people have. But then you haven't faced that demon. And every time what happens is it reinforces that and you become worse and worse and more afraid and more afraid. And I know this because that's what happened to me with airplanes, with, with all these fears I wasn't facing in, in, my, in my life. And I had to realize, I had to come to the point that, you know what? It doesn't ever get better. It only gets worse unless you face it. Like the, like the, the fear that you have right now is the least that it's ever going to be. Tomorrow it'll be worse. So do you want to you know, face a demon today where it's a little bit smaller or face it you know, a year from now where it's bigger? And so for me, you know, again, and I think part of this has to do with being, having being, been a software developer and having a very analytical mind Right. So if, if you, the smarter you are and the more that you analyze things, the more that I feel like the normal social anxiety affects you. And it affected me a lot. Right. Because I'm thinking about 500 different things. I'm analyzing the situation instead of it's very hard for me to be out of my head. Right. I'm 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 in my head most of the time. And so I see other people and they're out of their head. And I'm like, well, how do you do that? And a lot of times the people that it comes naturally to, they don't have as much going on up here. And that's why, because they can just be a little bit more free, right? Uh, so, so for me, what, what happened really was I got to this point in my life where I, I, I did this exercise, right? I, I, I basically came to the point where I said, you know what, John? you're kind of full of shit, man, because you pretend to be confident. You pretend like you have all of these things going for you and mastered, but at, at your heart, I don't think you're what you represent. So I, I, I looked in the mirror. I literally took off my clothes naked, standing in the mirror. And it was both physical and metaphorical, right? Because not only did I look at my body and say, Hey John, actually, you know what? You're actually kind of fat. Like, <laughs> like you're, you're not, you know, you, you might think that you're, you're flexing and you're in bulking season, but you're not. You're actually kind of a fat ass. And then, you know, and, and really in a non-judgmental mental way, but just like a, I want to see reality clearly. And then I went through all of the things. Right? I was like, oh, John, are you really that confident? Like you're, you're even teaching other people to be confident. And this was, you know, maybe, you know, it, it, a, 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 quite, quite a while back. And uh, but the question is, like, if you just saw some girl that you were interested in, would you go and talk to her? No, you would make up, up all manners of excuses as to why now is not the time or this isn't the right moment. So you're not doing that. Right. So I really had to kind of strip down and say, OK, I just want to see reality as clearly as possible. And once I did that, I had a base to work from, because I think one of the biggest problems that 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 people have is that they try to pretend like they're already what they want to be in from an ego perspective, right? It's, it's great to act as if you're already what you want to be. That's great because that will cause you to step into the role and to take the actions of the person that you want to become. But what I was doing was, was fraud. It was fake. I was pretending to already be that person without putting in the work and I was avoiding a lot of life, avoiding uncomfortable situations. And said, I said, okay, I need to face this shit. And once I had that baseline and then I knew where I wanted to go, then it was very clear, right? If I was going to overcome my social anxiety, exposure therapy, I had to go out there and I had to like, I had to basically develop within myself the, the understanding that I need to feel uncomfortable and the more that it's okay to be uncomfortable. Right. That's the, the second thing that, you know, I end up working with a lot of my my coaching clients on is that I try I tell them, OK, you know, they they maybe they're I tell them, hey, go out to a bar, you know, go and talk to a girl. And and they're like, oh, I tried to do it, man. But when I was standing there, I was uncomfortable and I'm like, good, this is what we want. We, like, there's nothing wrong with being uncomfortable. Like we have for some reason, we think we have to, like, be in situations where, oh, if it's not comfortable, I can't do it. Or like, oh, yeah, I was going to go talk to that girl, but, but I just felt uncomfortable or I did it. And the whole time I was feeling uncomfortable. And my answer is good, good. This is what we want. We want you to not only be uncomfortable, but to be the kind of person that can, that can stand there and be in the awkward silence and then just 
be like, this is awesome. I'm in, this is so fucking uncomfortable because what, what you have to understand is that that's where you're growing the most when you're, when you're not, not just being uncomfortable, but forcing yourself to stand there in that uncomfortable feeling. It's like taking a cold shower. It's like you're growing because you're forcing yourself to be there and you're, you're letting go of this need to feel comfort this. And, and, and I think that really just unlocks a huge, a huge portion of potential in life. But yeah, so that's, that's kind of my thoughts on it. And that's how I overcame it. And, you know, practically what that meant was just going out there and putting myself in those uncomfortable situations, just going out, you know, when I was younger, just talking to girls, going and talking to whoever, right. You know, doing things that would make me uncomfortable until the point that, and, and, and I think what, you know, the, the key here is that it doesn't ever totally go away. It's not like you ever completely lose the social anxiety because fear you cannot control. It, fear is built in. Like it, it can be buffered to, to some degree and, and enough exposure, you can rewire your brain to not see that as a, as a threat as much. But ultimately you can't control it. But what you can control is courage, always. And instead of working on trying to get rid of your fears, which is what most people do, instead, if you work on strengthening your courage, you can summon that at any time. It doesn't matter how scared you are. At any moment, you can just choose to have courage. And the more you work on that, the less it matters if you're afraid of things. Because, hell, you could be afraid of a whole array of things, but you know you have the secret weapon, which is courage. And for me, that's what it, what it came down to. Is there's a lot of situations even now that I'm, I'm uncomfortable. In fact, I might be coaching someone, and I may be sh like trying to show them what to do, and I need to do it, and I'm uncomfortable and scared but I, ha I know I have courage so I can just force myself to go and do it anyway. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my, my path and my, my thoughts on it. Dude, love that. Fucking love it. And one of the things you really touched on is this concept of confidence. Mm -hmm. And dude, I, I saw your YouTube video from eight years ago when you started, right? And like oh, yeah. your demeanor and, and, and just, man, you, you, you used to sound like just a dweeb, like just, exactly. a, just a dweeb. Yeah. I'm like, that's John. I showed my friend Sergey today. I'm like, dude, this is John. Like, it's like, there's no way. So here's, here's a very interesting question. Physical movement, physical training, intensity over the years, how much of a part has that played in your confidence and your, your, the belief in yourself? Because you know, you, you, the, the girl thing, right? You're, you're scared and, and, and you have to have that courage. Is, is physical movement a big deal for you in your transformation? Yeah, I would say the, the bigger part of it, though, is the, the discipline. Like, if you want to discipline the mind, discipline the body, right? It's the, it, you guarantee discipline the mind by disciplining the body, right? If you can endure the physical pain, right? Pain is, is what causes transformation. There is no transformation without pain. Pain is, is something that we should celebrate because pain causes us to expose our layers and, and to dig deep, right? So one of the things I was just talking to a friend of mine and I've been fasting, I've been only eating Monday, Wednesday and Friday for the last eight weeks. So I've been on that, that kind of a fast while running, you know, 40, 50 miles a week and, and lifting and everything. And he was saying, well, why are you doing this? Like, what's the benefit? And aren't you going to die? I, <laughs> exactly. And I was like, well, you know, obviously there's the health benefits. I could go over that. And I feel like I retain more muscle mass and, you know, for, it shows like there's, there's all that stuff. I said, but do you know what's the most really important thing about this? I said, if you fast for three days, you will find out who you are. That's you will figure out who you are because all of the pretense and all the bullshit that you use to get through your day and the dopamine hits that you use to make it through the day and to be a nice person and to have motivation and to get shit done. All of that disappears when you can't eat and you're in pain and you're, you're sorry, and you're still doing hard workouts. And so really like the physical movement, the discipline, like the, the physical aspect of it, almost like a yogi, right? It's like that there, there's like, you know, the, the, the three ways to find, uh, to, to find enlightenment, right? It's, it's like one of those paths is, is through wisdom and one through the kind of religion. And, but one of them is through physical and, 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 and there's something about that, like of, of pushing yourself of, of doing those things that it, I mean, sure at the surface level, it builds you confidence, right? If you have a nice physique, 
you're going to be a little bit more confident. If you've accomplished some things that you set out to do, that's going to build up your confidence. But in re but the real deep benefit of it is that that pain that connects you with them now, that connects you with who you really are and allows you to work on who you are. Because it's only when you break down all of that shit, which requires something to do it, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be physical, but fuck, going out there and pushing yourself and, and pushing yourself to your physical limits, that will break down all the shit. Then you have this, this sort of soft underbelly that's exposed and you see all the, sh the imperfections in there. And now you can work on those things only when it takes a while to get down to that layer. And it's only available to you when you're in those moments of pain. That's where, you're, that's where you truly have like the key to shape and unlock your character. And, and all the rest of the time in your life, you, you can't really affect that deep layer. But once you pull everything back, and so that's why I, I feel like the, the, the physicality of it, the pushing yourself, that, that pain that you experience there, that allows you to shape yourself and reshape yourself. Uh, just like, you know, the, the analogy of, of melting, you know, gold and, and taking off the impurities, right? You, it has to go through that process of being melted. Like you can't get the impurities out of gold while it's solid. It has to be melted down and then you can see them and then you can actually remove them. And that's, it's the same thing with, with physical, deep physical pain that you experience through pushing yourself. And, it, and, it, and the, the key to this is that it has to be self-inflicted. It cannot be something that you just endure because you had no choice. Uh. You don't grow from stuff that you like, cause you wonder, right? You know, a lot of people say, well, uh, affliction or, or, or difficult times right through, through that. Some people grow and flourish and, and other people, they don't, they, it, it crushes them. And, and what I've found in life is that the difference is that the people who bring pain upon themselves intentionally to endure it, those are the people that adversity strengthens. The people who the world crushes them down, like you know, the whole stoic idea of the, the cart dragging the, the dog or the dog you know, going <laughs> along with the cart, that's, that's the difference. And if you're being dragged by the cart, uh -huh. then all the shit you go through, it, it's for nothing. <laughs> but if you realize that this is the direction the cart's going and you're tied to it, or you, or you make yourself go and endure these things, then you gain the benefit of it. Got it. Man, wonderful. There, there's a few more things that I, I really want to ask you. When I watch your Instagram stories and you know, your YouTube videos, and, and, and as I see, it's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things you're consistent with, right? For example, the, the marathon running, the fasting. I was like 48 hours into a fast, three days into a fast. Over the years, has there been something that you've always stayed consistent with that that you really truly believe in for yourself? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a number of things, honestly, right? So the, the I, like missing a workout, I, I have probably haven't missed that, a workout. Maybe I've missed like one or two workouts in the last five or six years. Wow. Right? If I have it planned on my schedule, Amazing. I do it. I remember one time recording a YouTube video at 2 a.m. in Cork, Ireland. I had just gotten to the hotel and I was running on a treadmill in a basement. And, and I was saying in the video, I was like, look, the reason why I'm doing this right now is not because I'm afraid I'm going to get fat or I'm going to get out of shape. I, I said, the reason why I'm doing this is because the most valuable thing that I have in my life is my belief in myself, my trust in myself. And most people have lost trust with themselves. It's not that, they, that they've lost trust with other people. It's that they've lost trust with themselves. It, it's basically, and, and I, could, I consider it life or death. Because it's self-sovereignty. It's sovereignty over your life. If you cannot think a thought in your head and say, I will do this thing, and then, it, and then you cannot actually make that happen, then you are like a passenger in the vehicle of your own car. You're, you're in the back seat of the car that is your life, and someone else is driving. Fate is driving, right? Other people are driving. I always want to be the person in the front seat of my car. Otherwise, I've basically given my life away, right? It is not my life. It is just random chances in events that happen, just input and stimulus that determine the, the factors in my life. So self-sovereignty is so critical. And the only way to regain or to gain self-sovereignty is to have an absolute trust in yourself that if you say you will do something, you will do it. And so a lot of my life, almost you know, a very large portion of the things that I do 
I have maintained because they're, they're life or death to me. It's, it's literally life or death. It's literally, do I want to give up my life? Because as soon as you give up control, you don't know when you may have that lucid moment of clarity where you could regain that control. You can go on to autopilot very easily. Wow. And just most, most of people living their lives are not living their lives. They're, living, they're reacting to environment and other people and they are not actually, you know, one of the very first things I do when, when I have a new coaching client is I, I say, give me your, put your iPhone up to the screen on the alarms, right? And I, and I, and almost every time it's like 6.30 a.m., 6.35, 6.40, 6.45. And I'm like, how can you p- plan on accomplishing anything in life if, if at night you can't say, I want to wake up at X time and then do it? But you've started your entire day letting yourself down, lying to yourself, proving that you cannot trust any of the thoughts or the words that are, are in your head. So I tell them, take it all off. You get one alarm. That's it. And if you don't fucking get up when that alarm goes off, then you fucking deal with the consequences of that. You, you deal with it like a man. You don't fucking get a second. Like you, you have to then say, I lied to myself. Bullshit. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and if maybe you're late for work, then you tell your boss, you're like, I set my alarm for 630. It went off. I did not get up. Mm-hmm. That's it. Own the shit because you, you, everyone's letting themselves off the hook. They're allowing their life to be, be ruled by circumstances instead of by their own sovereignty. Wow, dude, sick. Two more things I want to ask you. One, sure. um, the push, 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 intense energy that I always feel from you. How do you do the yin part of it? The, the, the resting part of it or the, what is that for you? Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. You know, I don't really focus on that part. I, I you know, I think it just, I think it just comes naturally, right? It, it's, it's like a cycle. It's like a rhythm. I, I focus on the, the, the harder part, which is the pushing, right? Okay. That, that's what I focus on. And then I feel like it just, the other part comes in. And, and, and I sort of have this, this, my view of life is this, is that you never get to, if you've ever done like, you know, boxing or, or, or MMA or anything like that, like, and maybe, you know, like when you're in your first few classes, right? You're up there, you're in your fighting stance, right? And then inevitably what happens is your arms start to get a little tired, right? Your shoulders get tired. So you drop your gloves, right? And bam, right? If the instructor is good, he gives you a good one. And he says, never drop your gloves. Never, never. I don't care how, never drop your gloves, right? And I look at life like that. I look at life as you never get a chance. Because if you're waiting for the bell to ring so that you can finally (sighs) drop my gloves, that's when you get punched in the face. And it's like, if, but it's all about the understanding. If you view life and you say, okay, well, you know what? I just got to get through today. I'm, I'm trying to get to this one point. In fact, David Data in The Way of Superior Man, in the very first chapter, he, he hits the nail on the head when he talks about this, to stop waiting for things to be done, right? If you're living your life in such a way that you wake up and you're like, well, just got to get through the day and then I can relax, then what's happening is you're just waiting to drop your gloves and every day is a fucking struggle mm-hmm. because you're just trying to get through, you're trying to get through your life. You're trying to like uh, that movie click, like fast forward through your damn life, right? But if you have the mindset that says, I never get to drop the gloves tomorrow, I'm going to wake up and I'm fighting, I'm fighting all day. And then the next day I'm fighting and the next day I'm fighting and my whole life is a fucking fight and I'm ready for it. It, it seems almost counterintuitive. So, so what I'm saying is if, if I just go out for a run and you're like, okay, we're going for a run, John, right? And I don't know how long we're running. I don't know how hard to push and how to pace myself. And I may push myself thinking that we're just going one mile and start running really fast. But if in in reality, we're running 26 miles, then Uh. I'm going to die. And I'm going to put forth a Herculean effort on that first mile. And then I'm going to be done. I won't be able to make it 26 miles. But if I know that we're going 26, or I know we're going 100 miles, I'm training for a 100 mile race this year, then I am going to be ready for each mile to fight mentally, to, to go and put in the effort that I need to, you know, a 20 mile March type of mentality instead of what most people live their life. Like I said, is, is just waking up. Okay. Just got to get through today. Just got to make it through the weekend. And you're basically fast forwarding through your whole life and you're not expecting the battle. So 
So basically my, my whole viewpoint is just that shift of the gloves always are up. You always will be fighting. It's always going to be a battle. Life is always a challenge. There's no resting in, in the, in the sense of, you know, obviously you, you, you take a rest, but what I mean is that there's no resting as far as the struggle and journey of life. Like you're not going to get to a point, and, and I thought that I, I was at some point because, you know, my goal was to retire young, and I sort of hit that around 33. I hit the passive income from my real estate investing, all the things I was doing, and I was like, I could just, I don't have to do anything anymore. And that was the most destructive thought I ever had in my life. It went into the deepest depression I ever experienced when I hit that goal because I realized that life is fucking pointless unless you give it meaning and purpose. And I had basically my, I had basically said, I just want to rest. And that was, was a horrible choice. So once I adopted the mindset to say that it's never going to be over, you're always going to fight. You're always going to have a new challenge. You're always going to have a new difficulty and, and to face those things, then you can have a much more stoic mindset where you say, Hey, I'm ready. I'm expecting that today will be hard. It's like Marcus Aurelius says in meditations where he's like, when you wake up in the morning, assume that everyone that you meet is you're going to meet some jerks. You're going to meet some assholes. People are going to treat you poorly, that you're going to face some struggles in your life, right? If you come in with that assumption, you're ready. If you come in with the assumption of, oh, I'm just going to do this and then I'll be done and then I can just take a nice rest. Fuck, you're going to get slammed. You're going to get smashed by life or you're going to waste it just resting all the time because you're not prepared for the, for the battle. But if you think of it as every day, I have to, it's a, a, it's a new battle and I have to fucking fight. It, it changes your whole perspective. Then you have the endurance to actually make it. Got it. Understood. And um, final question I want to ask you is you mentioned purpose. Hmm. Um, when I see your transformation from, you know, you, you know, the simple programmer, now it's, you know, bulldog mindset, obviously. And then, you know, you were a programmer back in the day. Your purpose has been, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, sort of shifting or changing. What purpose or, or drive is, is right now deepest in you? Okay, day to day. so... So I would say that my purpose hasn't changed. I don't believe that our okay. purpose has changed. I think my way of expressing the purpose has changed, right? So, so I have a real easy way for anyone to find their purpose in life, which is simply this. Figure out what, no matter what station you are in life, no matter what phase in life, no matter what job you have, right? Whether you're a janitor or the president of the United States, what is the one thing that you would always do and no one could stop you from doing, no matter what it is. Like you've done this all your life. You already are living your purpose to some degree. You're just not aware of it. But what is the one thing that you're always doing, no matter what? It doesn't matter what circumstance or what job you're at, right? For me, it was real simple. It, it is that I am absorbing information, learning, simplifying that information and sharing it and teaching it with other people. That's, I always have done that. Uh, if I were a janitor, I would be figuring out the best way to mop the fucking floor and I would be showing the other janitors how to do it. That's what I would be doing, right? When I was a software developer, I did that. As, as, as I started growing and started learning about personal development and masculinity, I had to share that with the world. That's why Bulldog Mindset came about. So all of these things reflect my purpose. And you know, different people have different purposes, but your purpose can be expressed in many, many different ways, but you're already living it. Like people are trying to find their purpose. They, they're already living their purpose. They're just not aware of it. Now, but when you, what, ma what happens magically though, is when you actually figure out what the purpose that you're already living is and you connect those two things, then you can do some magical stuff because you're not, you, you don't, you don't have to question, should I be doing this or should I be doing that? Because it's not what you're doing. It's how you're doing it. Right. That's what, what, what counts in it. And it's like, it doesn't matter. Like, okay eliminate all my companies, everything that I've done so far, and now put me on a different path. Fine. I'll still be doing my purpose. <laughs> right. Mm. And I'll be happy because the thing that makes me happy is not that I'm a software developer or that I'm a, that I, that I do bulldog mindset or business owner. It's that I am doing that thing that I am born to do. And I, and I, and I can't help myself from doing it anyway. Wow. I'll be honest with you, man. This is uh, the first interview I've ever done, which I'm actually going to rewatch. 
right. so thanks so thanks so much just to be honest that. Yeah. thanks so much man yeah dude uh that's that's what i had man thanks for your time um i know you're a busy guy you're all days packed all nights packed so thanks a lot for being here um what's the best way to reach you man for the guys to come and 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 get in touch with you so the best thing to do is just to go to bulldogmindset.com and actually take the bulldog quiz there. I've got a quiz where you just 10 questions and it will tell you what your bulldog mindset score is. And that will tell you like where you are. It's hard questions, right? It's, it's tough shit. It, it, kind of, mm. it is, is stuff like, you know, physical fitness, uh, the fi- your financial aspect uh, is the social aspect, right? And, and the mentality. And it'll give you, most people score pretty low on that, but it'll tell you where you're at. And, and from there, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some information on how to raise that score, but yeah, bulldogmindset.com, you'll see a pop-up for the quiz or you can just go to the quiz page and, uh, and yeah. And then from there you can find out about all, all the rest of my stuff. So. Awesome. Thanks, man. All right, guys, go to Bulldog Mindset and take that quiz. I'm going to take that quiz as well very soon. All right. And uh, yeah, man, thanks for being here. Thanks for your time, John. Yeah, thanks for having me.